Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here's the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, from your favorite real estate niche website, www.thelandgeek.com. And it's a new year, 2014. And to start the new year, I thought it would be pretty cool to bring back Paul from upstate New York. Paul, how are you? I'm good. I'm good, Mark. How about yourself? I'm great. Happy New Year. Thank you. Are you hungover? Um, I, I'm not. Uh, I was good this year. All right. But you are cold. I am freezing. It's like a negative five here. Wow. I mean... Do people even, do you even go outside when it's negative five? What do you do? I've made excuses to stay home and talk to you all day. That's great. That's <laughs> great. Well, I, uh, I appreciate you coming on the podcast again. I do think, you know, it's important that it's not just, you know, me and Duran all the time talking about uh, whatever it is we talk about because we've been doing this for so long. I really like getting the newbie perspective. And Paul, how long have you been working? You, you acquired the the, uh, the Investor's Toolkit a couple months ago? Yeah, mid, mid-October, I think. Okay. And um, you've, you had some great deal flow, and now you've, you're on your way to closing your first deal. So what's your experience been like? And um, let's just kind of talk about that. If, you know, so we get the newbie perspective. You've gone through it, and... You've, you've made your offers, now you've got your accepted offers, and now you close. Like, wh- what did you do? How did it go? Well, um, you know, obviously, I, I spent my first month setting up some branding and, and getting uh, legal, as I like to put it, you know, opening up an LLC um, so that everything wasn't in necessarily my name. Uh, right. From there, I did some some lists down in, in Florida. Um, I did a small one in New York. Um, I, I did some learning curve on, uh, I had to tighten up on the offers that I was making. I think I was a little, uh, just offering on everything and I didn't really, I probably shouldn't have did that at first. So I wasted some time with that. Um, so I, I learned a little bit about, uh, cleaning my lists up a little bit better. Uh, from there, I sent out a bunch of offers. I got, a uh, you know, about four or five back down in Florida, um, that I chose not to move on, um, I did get one back that I, I just got a signed copy of a deed back in in Western New York. Uh, that's a, a half an acre lot that I bought for about three hundred dollars. Um, wow! Yeah, it's a it's it's worth a, a good five thousand. So um, to get it for three hundred was a, was definitely a great deal. Um, and now I'm I'm just getting situated to start marketing that lot. Um, I'm working on getting some new lists to send out some more um, some more offers. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at. That's unbelievable. That's uh, that's fantastic. Let, let me ask you this: you're you're part of the Platinum Mastermind Group. Um, what do you think of the masterminds? It's definitely you know, great. Yeah, because last time we talked, you're like, eh, it's a little advanced. So do, yeah. you, do you like the pace of it now? Uh, it's certainly changed up a lot. Um, you know, it was similar to to you and Jaran's. Uh, we've been doing this for years, and and we're awesome at it. Um, and you brought a, a lot more um newer people on so there's a lot more current trends and and learning curve with different people and um you know it certainly adds to the to the value of that and and helping the the growing and um it's a lot more educational um i definitely more educational right right i mean yeah exactly i mean do you think it's 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 the needed support that someone would need after going through the investors toolkit or is it maybe you need it maybe you don't it just depends on you um you know i think i went into it a little stubborn thinking that I didn't need it. Uh, and you know, I, I think the, the way you've changed it up and, and brought, um, you know, a bunch more people on board and, and have it a little bit more on day-to-day tasks and, um, day-to-day thinking, uh, versus, uh, you know, explanations of, of older deals, uh, certainly helps a lot with, uh, you know, how useful it is and, and, you know, wanting to waiting for the next week to come to hear, if hopefully, um, you know, something is, is current with me as well. Right. Right. Okay. Great. Great. So, um, it's the new year, 2014. Everybody talks about new year's resolutions. I did a, a, uh, I 
YouTube coffee talk video on, you know, New Year's resolutions and setting up a vision board. Do you do you do anything like that? What do you typically do when you start the new year? Um, I'd have to say I, I think I've tried to stay away from my New Year's resolutions because they always tend to be too lofty and uh, they fall apart and I never keep them. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, I have my own little mental vision board. I probably should actually make one. Um, but, uh, you know, it's uh, that vision board stuff. It definitely helps. You think about it and you look at it and um, every day you keep telling yourself it's it's coming and it's going to happen. And, uh, you know, I've had good success with the few things that I've actually really put on my mental vision board or I've printed and, and left on my desk. And I, I look at it every day and I go, I, I definitely have to work on that today. Um, so I, I do do things like that. I leave myself little reminders everywhere. Uh, my task manager is probably my best vision board. That's yeah. What what do you do to manage your tasks? Do you have a, any kind of software program? You know, I'm using an app um, that is for Android cell phones. I, I don't know if it's available for iPhones. I'd imagine it probably is. And it's it's a simple, very clean. It's called Any Dot Do, and that's the website as well. Oh, any .do. I I know Any Dot Do. That's supposed to be unbelievable. Here, I'm gonna. Yeah, I, you know what? You know, can I can I steal that for my tip of the day? No, yeah, I'm, sure. Or my tip of the week. No, I'm, I'm kidding. It's mine. That, oh yeah, that any dot do is fantastic. It's it's just so lean. Um, you know, every task manager out there is so cumbersome and and clunky and wants to link to this and link to that and connect to this and um, you know I get lost in the mess. So I, I really like it because it's it's very simple. It's you put in notes. Um, it reminds you you can put in times and it just keep pop, popping up on your screen like hey you didn't do this yet. Um, and then, it, you know, it automatically pushes things that you don't complete today to the next day. Uh, you can schedule them out. Um, so, I, I mean, I like it. It's very, very lean. Um, and that's what I like about it. It's fantastic. What do you think? How, how's it going with Ring Central? It, you know, because I, I like the way that you you did your branding and your marketing with Ring Central, sort of bifurcating the two sides of buying and selling. Um, are you seeing any results with that? I mean, it's it's tremendous. I'm doing it. I love it. But yeah, you know, I mean, I, I wish my phone rang more. I guess I could say, uh, but that's again my own fault for uh, kind of slacking off on on doing some um, campaigns the last month. Um, but you know, it's definitely great. It keeps people from really bothering you. Um, I I have so much going on, which again is why I kind of love this little side niche business um, that you can really do on your own time. Uh, and using the power ring central to keep my phone from ringing when I'm already getting calls from tenants and uh, my job and my consulting. And, uh, you know, my phone rings so much as it is. The last thing I want to do is get caught in the middle of the day, uh, you know, getting yelled at because I wanted to buy someone's land for nothing that yeah. they feel is extremely too low. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Let, yeah. Um, yeah. Let me let me ask you, how many hours a week are you working on the business? When I first started, I, I was definitely doing like, you know, an hour or two a day. Um, I, I've been very, very bad uh, lately. Uh, but again, I just got this deed in the mail and it's kind of breathed some life back into me. Um, you know, I'm sure with most people, you get a little frustrated and uh, you start thinking it's, it's, you know, it's not the miracle money thing that was posted on the internet. But at the end of the day, it's all about your own diligence. And if you're not working at it and you're not uh, investing at least some time, um, obviously you're not going to get rich. Uh, so, you know, now that I got something real in my hand, I actually bought a piece of property using your system, um, you know, for cheap, uh, you know, it, it's kind of got me motivated. I've been uh, moving today, uh, sending out, trying to get some new lists um, from some new counties and, and to kind of move forward with doing more offers. Right, right. I mean, the thing is that you're doing this, you know, part time, you've just got your first deal. It's a phenomenal deal. You're going to make 4700 bucks, right? I mean, if you did one of those a month, that would move the needle, I would think. If you made $56,400 your first year doing this part-time, like, does that move the needle for you in, in your life and your lifestyle? Or is it kind of like, well, I don't know. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I was, I was just talking about how my heat went out on one of my apartments today and it being negative five, um, you know, it, it really racks your brain when you're, Dealing with those kind of investments versus uh, you don't really care if there's nothing going on on a vacant piece of land. So it certainly adds a, a peace of mind um, as well when it comes to you know being in the the real estate game, quote unquote. Right. No tenants, no termites. Right. 
No yep. uh, toilets. No toilets. No trash. That's a, the four T's. Yeah. It's the three T's. Yeah. I mean, I, I love it. It's we're spoiled. I have to tell you, Th- these these guys that flip houses, it's rough. But you know how it is. Yeah. Um. I I couldn't do it. But you but you're not flipping. You're you buy and you rent. I have a kind of a a small portfolio for for starters. Um. But. You know, I, I actually buy and, and rent. Um, I built in rent. Um, so most of my properties new construction. So I don't tend to have a, a ton of maintenance, which, um, you know, is, is great. But, uh, you know, I, I certainly like the, the quick motion of, of the land flip, um, you know, assuming that you can sell the land quick. Uh, but, yeah, it's a different it's a different mindset. It's definitely less stressful than flips. You know, I've, I've helped people on flips before and um, you know, there's so much more stress and, and const- you know, strict time constraints. Uh, the interests are going like crazy if you're not flipping it quick enough. And, uh, you know, there's a million problems that you can run into. And um, and that's all that you see on TV now. I think even A&E has its own flipping channel show now. Every single channel has a flipping show. The competition is just horrendous. Uh, you know, it doesn't, doesn't excite me, doesn't interest me at all. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's definitely, I mean, out here it's really tough. I mean... I've got a buddy. He's he owns like twenty five homes now, and he can't get inventory. I mean, it's just it's just too tight. You can't uh, you can't get the short sale deals like you could before, and it's it's tough. I mean, you know, everything's tough, but um, I think this is you know big you know bang for your buck time wise. I, I don't I don't know what's better, and I just love the aspect of a one time sale and then just getting that passive income. And for you, I mean, even for flips, you know, it's it's just going to help you, uh, you know, get like this just war chest of cash to continue buying and selling, buying and selling, and then you can transition into building your passive income portfolio with the buy and flip on terms deals. But uh, I mean, do you, have you thought about that far in, into the future? Like, okay, after I make this much cash and flips. And then I'm going to start doing, you know, longer term, you know, deals and start getting three, four, five thousand dollars a month coming in passively. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's really the goal. Even this one that I just bought, uh, you know, I've been busy, so I'm just sending out a letter to the the next door neighbor and hoping that he bites. But um, you know, I I put a, a cash price and then I gave him three different financing terms as well. Um, so I'd be more than happy if he he bought it on terms. Um, you know, I certainly don't need to completely cash out. It, it would be nice. So I had, you know, a little extra equity to to go buy a couple more quicker, which, you know, I could do that anyway. But I, you know, I'm more than happy to accept terms. Um, you know, that was in the letter. I gave him, you know, four different options, uh, you know, 0% interest, 5% and 10% for different years. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy with terms. I'd, I'd love to do that and gain the passive income. I, pretty much the down payment on any of the scenarios covers my my initial investment anyway yeah yeah um, exactly i mean that, that that deal gives you so much flexibility because you literally have almost nothing in it at 300 dollars. Right. i mean that's crazy um but that's what it might, you know i say it's crazy but that happens every day i mean look at bob anderson's story um, yeah 57 dollars I mean, 57 dollars and he's gonna sell it for twelve thousand. um is that what he said it was a twelve thousand i think yes yeah, i think it was like ten thousand somewhere 10, in there 12 I mean, yeah something like that but yeah that's... I'm definitely looking in the wrong areas. I learned that today. <laughs> um, I need to broaden my horizons a little bit and, uh, and and not be so dedicated to going where I want to be um, and go to where the money is instead. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Let let the market dictate it. All right, so let's make some some New Year's resolutions for you so that you're completely focused, right? So um, how should we do this? Uh how do you how do you make your New Year's resolutions? Do you use software or um, I use a program called Everest? I don't know if they have it on on Android. I've I've heard of it, but I I don't think I've ever used. It. It's got a, like a is, does that have the the, the elf, el, elephant as the logo? Is that no? I mean, no, it's like a it's like a big mountain. But I mean, it doesn't matter. You can just write it down. But I, I think you know for the, for resolutions, you just start with like you know. The big macro resolution. So let's say, you know, it should be something that you you personally believe that you can do. So how about if, you know, you make $75,000 cash extra 
in the land business for 2014. Does that sound reasonable? Um, with with how cheap I'm, I'm hearing people buying land, then I absolutely think that it could be uh, definitely obtainable. I, I don't see why not. If you're spending, you know, enough, uh, at least some time doing it. I know I haven't spent a ton of time and I'm already seeing progress. So right. um, it, it's definitely doable. So, that, so that's only, that's 62.50 a month in cash flips. Right. So that's, that's, that's might be a couple deals a month. Let, let's say two to three deals a month to be conservative because you're not always, you're not always going to get, you know, these, a deal that you're going to make $4,700 on. Right. Right. So let's, let's say two to three a month. So, so then your act, your, your action per week is you need to make how many offers then per week to get that deal. So how many offers did you have to make? to find that great deal that you found? I'd probably say around under 250. Un under 250? Yeah. Okay. And uh, see, that's a lot of offers to only get one deal though. You should be, well, getting, you should be getting more than that. Uh, well, again, I got four that I chose not to move on. Um, okay. So, you know, I, I did get some good responses. On Actually, I should say on that campaign, on that county that I bought the one in, I think I only sent out 50 letters. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So how many letters do you think you need to send out a week to get three deals a month? I'd like to do a, at least a hundred a week. Um, All right. So let's write that down. hundred offers a week. And our goal is our, so that's our action goal is a hundred offers a week. And we know we're doing, we know we're, we're succeeding when we get three deals a month. Right. So there you go. And then those three deals, you're going to, you're going to average out, you know, making uh, a little more than $2,000 per deal, which is doable. It's not, it's not pie in the sky numbers. No, I, again, um, I think it sounds like it until you actually get into it and realize uh, how, how, how quick the process really works once you get going. Right, right. Have you ever, have you ever done a, a, a another you know take home study course type of thing in real estate before? You know what, I haven't, um, and that's why I think I was so skeptical of uh, of buying into your your toolkit. Um, it really took a lot out of me to to make the commitment because I I usually look at everything as it's it's just another scam. Um, so I've always been too skeptical to actually. Uh, buy into one. Um, so this would be my first, actually. Oh wow! That, well, that's that's great. Um, I'm good of, marketing. I'm kind of <laughs> I'm kind of honored that that uh, you you would take that step. I mean, were you scared though? Or, or um, I mean, like because I you know I'll tell you I get a lot of emails like everyone's just scared. It feel I feel a lot of fear out there, as opposed to it's not laziness. Everyone wants to do it. They're just scared that um, it's not going to work kind of thing. Like I'm going to spend all this money, I'm going to spend all this time, and then it's just going to be, it's not going to work. I think it's more of there's just so many out there right now. Um, I mean, everywhere you go, uh, every time you scroll down Facebook, there's a million get rich uh, templates that people are trying to get you to buy. Um, you know, I just, I just refreshed Facebook right now and I got the funnel experts, um, you know, make $30 million profit blueprint. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it's, it's relentless, the real estate training quote unquote that are out there. Right. Um, so, you know, it's, you, you gotta believe that they obviously can't all work. Um, you know, this guy's not going to give me the $30 million profit blueprint for free. Um, like he says, right. uh, so you know, it's just, it's everywhere and it's, it's hard to, you know, believe that it's actually going to work. And I'm sure you, a lot of people have bought into, um, you know, bought into them that, that didn't really get results. But a lot of times, you know, you have to actually do something as well. Um, you're not actually doing it, then you're never going to get anything. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you didn't have, uh, any type of, uh, paralysis by analysis with the program, did you? I mean, did you feel like it was just an overwhelming amount of information? Because I really try to keep it, you know, in chunks. I think, like I said, in the in our first uh, 
podcast that there there's certainly a lot of information to digest and I kind of did it a little bit slower. Um, right. I decided to, to sit, um, do half of it, really get to the, the buying part of it. Um, and then once I really start acquiring land, then get into the, the selling it. And I, I don't even want to go near the automating it yet um, because I really want to get the systems intact before I try automating it. Uh, which, you know, you have a, a ton of great information on how to almost take yourself out of the out of the puzzle completely. Right. Which, yeah, I'm a big believer in. I mean, but, you know, I, I do like I do like the way you're doing it. I do like the fact that you're getting involved, you're getting your hands dirty and you're intimately familiar with every aspect of the business. And, you know, I just hope that you're, you know, writing it all down, taking screenshots of everything you're doing so that you can hand it off easily when you're ready for that part. Are, are you doing that? Obviously not. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, no. Paul, start doing that. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, because I really haven't found a, a real specific system yet. I think I've been kind of learning from my own mistakes. Um, you know, every time I do something and then I, I go back and I say, you know, I could have did that better. I could have did that different. And, and next time I will. Um, and that's where I got to with the last one that I actually ended up buying uh, and now I'm kind of working on a new, new stuff now that I think I'll probably document down a little bit better now that I really have a better idea of what I'm doing than just kind of um, swinging blind. Right, right. How 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 are you feeling about the overall market? You know, I'm I'm sitting out here on the West Coast, and you know, it, it's funny because like in my little bubble in my little world, I think things are going great. Uh, out here, but the rest of the country, it's hard to gauge. Like what's going on on the East coast? What's, what's like the general feeling as far as land investing or yeah, real as, far estate as, in the, general? as far as the macro economy and as far as real estate is concerned. Um, you know, I, I'm in New York, so real estate's always pretty good. Um, we never really had the massive, massive downturn like everybody else did. Right. Um, but, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, it's literally specific location based. I think that one of the biggest challenges now is with the fact that there's so many foreclosures out there and, and short sales are, are stacking up. Um, you know, it, it has a lot of people scared to, to move forward. Um, or it hurts a lot of people that want to grow. You know, when you bought something and you expected a, a large appreciation and now it's, it's kind of stagnant or you're now competing with foreclosure pricing. Um, you know, it prevents a lot of people from forward growth, I think, as well. Right. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. How, how's the feeling of the just the general economy overall? I mean, what's the mood on in New York and the East Coast that you're um, seeing? I know uh, people I know they're cold. <laughs> yeah, we're all freezing. Um, you know, I know New York's biggest problem is the taxes are just overwhelming. New York is like just got ranked like the 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 fastest depopulating state or something like that. I was reading, no um, you know, people are vacating New York like crazy. Cause I mean, the taxes are out outrageous here. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I don't know. It's a hard, hard answer. I think it's very location, uh, almost city specific. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, that is a tough question. I do. I do like your, your strategy though of going after Florida because now you've got a state, there's no state tax. Yeah. No state income tax. And you know the people in New York flock to Florida typically. And, and right. I, mean, I know I know that's a stereotype, but is that still the case? Yeah, I think uh you know, a lot of people a lot of New Yorkers still go down to Florida. I got family that lives in Florida and every time I go down there, all I do is meet people that are from New York. Uh, you know, so Florida will always be, I think, the New York state. I think that's kind of the West Coast. Everybody from big cities in California go to Arizona and everybody in New York and New Jersey end up in Florida. Right. Um, right. And then, and those, and those deals you passed up in Florida, why'd you pass up on those? Uh, you know, it's what I, what I found was that their, their back taxes ended up being almost more, sometimes triple what the property value was worth the actual oh, yeah. real value. Like, so um, there'd be a property worth say 10,000 and they owe $30,000 in taxes. Um, where it was so backwards that the people that have the tax liens didn't even want to foreclose on them. Um, and, 
you know, so the people just thought they were going to get lucky and, and take my offer. And then I realized that they're, that after doing my due diligence, um, you know, the numbers just were too far from working. Um, some of them were in a more depressed areas than I, I realized. And they, they really weren't big enough. Uh, I didn't really do like a minimum size, right? Uh, which is one of the biggest things that I've changed. Um, you know, I realized that I made a bunch of offers on like, you know, 30 by a hundred foot lots, uh, that made no sense at all. Um, so, you know, I, I backed off a little bit and, and I don't think I'd move forward on anything under an acre, uh, okay. at this point. Okay. So yeah, so you, so you made some rookie mistakes. That's good. That's Absolutely. good. Because that, I mean, look, that's the only way you're going to learn. Right. Right. Um, I love that. I mean, it, it, look, it takes a lot of courage to step out of your comfort zone and make offers in an area that you're not that familiar with and just sort of have this faith that someone's going to bite on this deal. But look, you're getting results. I mean, that first deal, $300 is unbelievable. And you're, I mean, you're going to make $4,700 in your first deal. I mean, that's, that's tremendous. You, you, you should feel pretty good. How do you feel about it? I I feel good, but I'll feel even better once I have the check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and you're going to give me a, you know, a copy of it, the video testimonial. I can't wait. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, no worries. All right. So we're kind of getting to that point where uh, we want to talk about our tip of the week. And Paul, you know, I love putting people on the spot. So you already said any dot do. You have another tip of the week because you're, you're, I mean, look, you're a tech savvy guy. I know you're tech savvy. Yes. Um, hold on. I'm panning through my messages because I, I just got, I was talking to a friend of mine that actually, and this might not necessarily be for um, your land flipping tips, but it's a, a great website for uh, the house flippers. Um, and I, I'm sure land eventually will get funneled into it. Well, there was that one link that I did send you earlier this week too. Um, so there's two of them. Give me, give me 30 seconds to pull all this stuff up. Okay. Uh, so the first one is, um, the national realtors association, um, just is uh, launching a new website just for realtors to, to list land on a, a national platform. Um, and what was that? Like the land connection? Yeah. Doc? Land connection. You know, I showed that to Duran. He was like that they're terrible. Yeah. But, but you look, they're free. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's really more of a asset to probably realtors than to individual land flippers, but, uh, you know, it might be a place to, to find things or, um, you know, if you are a realtor to, to get it up there and, um, you never know who might see it. Um, but it's, it's one more place. And the other one is, I got it right here. Hubzoo. That's it. Hubzoo.com. H U B Z U.com. H Z U.com. I'm going to take a H U B Z U.com. H U B Z U.com. All right, cool. Let's take a look at this. Very cool. Homes for sale. The easy way to buy and sell homes online, start to finish. All right. Very cool. I mean, is there land on here? Uh, I don't know if there's land yet. I just saw this uh, literally the like two days ago um, and I haven't dug into it too deep, but uh, you know, it's, it's all auctions. It's mostly like short sales and foreclosures. Um, I don't see why you couldn't list land on it. Um, right. I don't know if anybody is, so you might be the first one doing it. Probably wouldn't be a bad thing, but um, I know like a lot of, a lot of things are getting pumped into this right now. Right. Um, so, you know, it's definitely worth looking into. All right, cool. Very cool. All right. Well, my tip of the week is going to be a customer relationship manager from the geniuses at 37 signals. And it is high rise HQ.com high rise HQ.com. Have you heard about, about this thing? No. Um, it's, I don't know. My, let me see. See high rise plans and pricing it says risk free 30 day trial cancel anytime. But, um, what's neat about this is it's a web based customer relationship manager, save and organize notes and email conversations for up to 30,000 customers and contacts, uh, keep track of proposals and deals, uh, share status with your company, department or team. Never forget to follow up, get a text message or email. So you never forget to make a call over 100 feature add-ons. I personally use a Mac based one called daylight, 
which I love. Um, but you know, a lot of people don't have Mac. So I, and, and actually Paul has disdain for the people in Cupertino. So, right. No, thanks. Yeah. He's so he's, you know, no, thank you. So this would be great for Paul. Um, so check out highrisehq.com because I think it's important. Like keep track of, of all your customers, keep track of all your deals because eventually as you get going, you, it, it will become overwhelming if you don't have a plan in place. So from day one, have some type of system. I mean, Duran just uses Excel um, and no problem, but this looks really cool. And I know uh, 37 Signals is uh, a nice company um, in the software space. I think they, they're they the guys that started Basecamp, which is a big project management program. So Paul from New York, thanks so much for uh, being on the Land Geek podcast today. Are we good? Any other issues? Anything? No. Uh, thanks for having me. Well, thanks so much for coming back. Uh, I love getting the newbie perspective. Uh, I hope it was helpful for, for everyone. And look, if you want more tips, tricks, techniques, go to www.thelandgeek.com. Download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the uh, Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes ebook, How to Avoid Them, not Here's How You Make Mistakes uh, ebook. And then uh, get this podcast delivered each week into your uh, email inbox. And look, give us some love. You want to buy some wholesale land? Go to FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. Uh, Paul's got some property for sale. Paul, you got a, you got a website people can go to yet? Not, not for uh, selling. Not for selling. Okay. Pretty soon he will. We'll, we'll send that out to you. And um, yeah, so go there and look, please leave a comment. Let us know how we're doing. Give us some topics that you want to hear about uh, and certainly rate us on iTunes. It really helps, keeps us motivated to continue doing this. And Paul's a really busy guy as well. So I can't thank you enough, Paul, uh, again, for, for taking this time out of your busy schedule to be on the Land Geek podcast. So uh, for Paul, keep warm. And uh, we'll see everybody next time. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Paul. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.